Yeah, welcome back. The Supreme Court has adjourned the suit filed by governors to challenge the Naira redesign policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to Wednesday, February 22. The Apex Court said it would consolidate on all, all the cases, stressing that all the states would abide by its decision on the matter. Mustafa, uh, who is the lawyer in the case, told the court that the, contrary to the order, CBN had since invalidated the old 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira notes. He therefore pleaded the Apex Court to reinstate the interim order, saying he had also filed a process to reflect federal government's disobedience of the court order. Joining us to understand this better is Utman Isato Chuku Esquire, a leading a legal practitioner who will help us to clarify some gray areas in this case. Uh, Utman, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for, for having me. Okay, now we are looking at um, the, the, Naira, the, new, the Naira redesign and the court cases. And what seems to be at the front burner now is not even uh, what was taken to the court, but the federal government is challenging the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to even in the first place hear that matter and take a decision. So what does the law say about cases like this? Um, thank you very much for, for having me. I think um, to start with, um, we need to understand the issue that borders around the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, by law, has um, two types of jurisdiction. The first um, jurisdiction of the Supreme Court is um, appellate jurisdiction, right, as provided under um, Section 233 sub 1 of the 1999 Constitution. While the um, second jurisdiction of the Supreme Court is the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as provided under Section 232 sub 1 of the 1999 Constitution. Now, what Section 232 sub 1 provides, which is the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, is that the Supreme Court shall have the original jurisdiction to entertain matters between the Federation and the state or between the states, right, when there are laws or issues of fact that are in contention between the Federation and the state or the state. This is with regards to the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And then when you come to talk about the issue that relates with the appellate jurisdictions of the Supreme Court is where matters have been heard by the court below, i.e. the high court, and the, court, the matter goes to the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal decides on the matter, and then the matter moves from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court. In that instance, the Supreme Court will assume his, his, his appellate jurisdiction on the matter. Now, having explained this, when you bring it, narrow this issue down to the issue in question about the, um, uh, the case between the um, Central Bank of Nigeria and that of, um, you know, the governors who had gone to the court to file a suit and then join the federal government against the state. It is um, it's somewhat um, uh, confusing because if you look at the, um, the course of um, action, it is arising as a result of the policies that the CBN gave, right? But again, you need to also look at it from another perspective. Whether the CBN was joined on the matter is a different issue. But then, this, the, 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 court, the, the Supreme Court has not even gone into the substantive issue. What the Supreme Court had already had done was to say parties should stay status quo ante based on the um, ex party order given by the Supreme Court. So whether or not the Supreme Court has jurisdiction has not even um, has not come to fall. It is not debatable because the matter has not been um, decided by the Supreme Court. What the um, what we expected federal government to do in this instance is to first of all obey the order of court on the interim, pending the determination of the suit, right? Because there is a pending application motion or notice pending before the Supreme Court, which will be determined on Wednesday. So I we we should have expected that the federal government should comply with that ex parte order before they go ahead to challenge the order 
the, the, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court on the matter. Uh, but in the instant case, I think what should be done at best is in order for us to continue to maintain the um, regard uh, institution of, of, of the judiciary as an uh, independent institution and as also um, one of the, the, arms, the three arms of, um, of government, what we should do is to respect the order of court as it, as it were and as it stands for us to continue to um, use the old Naira note in pari pasu with the new Naira note pending the determination of the motion on notice before the court. Otherwise, I fear this would amount to the contempt of court and it will not be, be good for, uh, for the precedent that this um, stance may, may, may set in our country in future. Okay, um, this brings to the, uh, to the fore a question about the independence of uh, the CBN because you have talked about the judiciary being independent, yes, but what about the independence of the CBN? Where does it start and stop? Because if we understand it well, uh, the CBN though has affiliation with the federal government, but it shouldn't uh, be directly under the federal government in such a way that the federal government dictates to it what it should do. And now that it was not joined in the suit, how will the federal government stop what an independent agency or organization or body has done because it has the right to do? How can the federal yeah, government they, enforce this? Yeah, that is, um, that is a very um, intelligent and smart question to ask. But you see, if you look at the provisions of um, the laws that establish the central bank, which is the CBN Act, Section 40 specifically provides that CBN is an agent of the federal government and among other peculiar of, um, authorities by the court. In the case of Fayoshi against the FCC, the Court of Appeal had also maintained that CBN is an agent of federal government. However, it's independent, right? Does not disassociate it from being, you know, part of the management and control of the federal government, i.e. the Ministry of Finance. In that instance, when an order like this comes up, what is expected of the federal government to do is to issue a circular to the central bank and directly to comply with the order of court, just like the Attorney General said when that order was given. Attorney General issued a statement that they were going to obey the order of court. So what we had expected the office of the was to they ask uh, uh, Barista, we can't seem to hear you. Maybe um, it's a problem of your earpiece or something. Could you just do without it? if it is possible, so that we get to hear you better. Okay, we're talking with um, Utman Isato Chuku. Uh, he's a legal practitioner. We're trying to unravel the mysteries behind the court judgment, the fight between the federal government and the Supreme Court, uh, the CBN's policy, uh, where the new NARA notes are supposed to be the ones uh, being used now and the other ones no longer legal tender. And the case that has been adjourned till Wednesday next week, uh, the February 22nd. So w we had some little problems. We'll just take a break now. When we return, we'll continue this conversation with Udman. Stay with us. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. I think your headphones or something, your earpiece. I, I think it was um, my network, but can you hear me now? Yes, it's a lot better. Okay, good. Please. Okay. Okay, okay so we'll come back. Yes. Do the same. So you just take your... You, yes. You just continue so, with so what we were let's saying. Let's take it from that independence of... of yes, the, yes, the, yes. We're standing by, yes. Bring us back. Uh, we're glad to know that you're still there and watching the run-up. Uh, we're talking about the NARA redesign, and we're trying to look at the case of the federal government and the Supreme Court. The federal government fighting, uh, uh, saying that the federal Supreme Court has no jurisdiction and all that. And we got to the point where we were talking about the independence of the CBN. Where does it start and stop? And that's where our guest, Utman Tochuku, was trying to uh, unravel the mystery behind all the uh, legal jargon 
dragon uh, that's behind all the case that we're talking about. So, uh, Utman, we're still with you. Uh, talk to us about how the independence of the CBN, uh, some people are, s are seeing it as it's being trampled upon by, by whether federal government or whether the Supreme Court and all that. And the fear is that someday, if this is allowed to stand, someday uh, somebody can just rise up and use the Supreme Court against the people, against any policy that the CBN brings up and all that. So, like you were saying, just continue to tell us where the CBN's independence starts and stops. Yeah, I will say that um, in Section 40 of the CBN Act, which provides for the... Um, um, would provide that CBN is an agent of the federal government, right? And then in, um, in the case of Fayoche against EFCC, the Court of Appeal held that the CBN is an independent um, um, institution. And for that purpose, the independency of CBN on that ground does not in any way vitiate it from complying with an order that affects it with regards to the federal government. In this instant case, for example, CBN cannot claim because they are independent, because they were not joined as, as a party to the matter, that they are not going to comply with the order of government. Because in that particular case, the Court of Appeal has established that the government, the federal government can write to the CBN back a circular so that they can comply to the order of court. They cannot begin to claim independence and the fact that the jurisdiction of the um the courts to entertain the case is questionable. The question to ask is this. Before you can ask a court to excuse itself on a matter of jurisdiction for an order that is already existing, you will have to first of all obey such order. You cannot disregard an order of courts and come back to that same court to seek an order. So if you look at it, it doesn't really make sense. You have to first of all obey an order of courts and then come back to that same court and seek for the court to look at itself and see whether or not they have jurisdiction to entertain such matters. So if it's a question of whether the independent of the CBN would not allow you to obey this order, the court has said no. Independent of the CBN does not apply in this instant case because the federal government is their chief CEO. It is the federal government that appoints that regulates the activities of the CBN based on the statutory act of the National Assembly that established CBN. So CBN is an act of the National Assembly. CBN is an institution established by, by an act of the National Assembly. In Section 40 of the CBN Act, it is an agent of federal government, right? And the federal government has the right to write it by a circular to direct it to comply to the order of court while the matter should be determined appropriately on Wednesday. If they have any matter as to the questions of the decisions of the Supreme Court, let them come back to the court on Wednesday and file their processes proper. Let the court hear them. But in this instant case, the CBN is bound to obey the order through the circular that should be sent to them by the federal government. Okay, I'm trying to understand this. So the Supreme Court is infallible that even if they make a decision in the wrong, the order is supposed to be obeyed. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is that even if Supreme Court make a decision in the wrong, the question, um, the answer to this question is yes. You are supposed to obey the order and come back to the same Supreme Court to tell the Supreme Court that this order you've made was made on a wrong footing and the Supreme Court deserved the right to overrule itself, it find merit on what you brought before it. Okay. And that's what the Supreme Court said. We are not final because we are infallible. We are rather infallible because we are final. They are the only courts that can overrule itself. So if you have any substantive um, matter or reasons why the Supreme Court should overrule itself, you come back before it appropriately. He who seeks equity must do equity. And he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. So these are principles of law that is very extant. You cannot disobey and show disregard to order of court. And then you want to come back to the same court to seek an order. It will be very difficult for even the courts to hear you. So I think the best the CBN can do now 
is for them to the best the federal government can do because it is not even appropriate to be using CBN CBN on this issue because they are not parties to the to the matter. Exa and we exactly. need to understand the technicalities that surround this issue, right? The reason. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we, I can hear you. Go ahead. There are extent we can go in discussing this issue so that it will not amount to subjudice since the, the matter is still pending before the court. So that we don't preempt the court. However, the reason why these um, issues are being raised as to whether or not the Supreme Court has jurisdiction is because the CBN is arguing that they are agents of the federal government and as such, they are, they are not bound by the order of court because... Um, issue of original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court should not be activated to hear this kind of issue. But another question you should ask yourself is that if you look at the motion ex parte that was filed before the Supreme Court, the parties on that suit is federal government against the state, which I had earlier explained to you mm. when I explained to you the two um, types of jurisdictions of the Supreme Court. I mm. talked about the original, original and the appellate, appellate yeah. jurisdiction. If they had gone ahead to file that suit joining CBN, like CBN against the state, the matter will have to start from this, from the court below. The matter will have to go proper, you know, from the high court, court of appeal, up to the Supreme Court. But because they already knew what was going to be at stake, they had to join federal government and the state and file it at the Supreme Court direct so that the Supreme Court can activate their original jurisdiction. And that is the beauty of the matter. That's why I'm saying the, Supreme Court, the CBN may even have a valid argument to say that they want to challenge the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. But then you already have an interim order on you. You have to first of all comply by that order before you now approach the court and say, court, look at this issue. I do not think that your jurisdiction is enough to entertain the matter. Well, yeah, because the next question would have been why in the first place was the CBN not joined in the matter. But you've just explained that they had to uh, permit it, cut corners, because they knew that the process might be long. But when you were talking about he who must come to equity will come with clean hands and all that, it, just, it was funny because um, the, clean, the hands of the, the, the Supreme Court uh, is debatable whether they are clean or not clean especially when we talk about the cases and the political cases of uh, Akpabio in Akwaibom State, for instance, and Yube, where we have the um, uh, Senate president. But if we have time for that, we could discuss that uh, more. But right now, the case has been moved to Wednesday next week, uh, February the 22nd, yet... The president has made an, an, a pronouncement today. He addressed the nation today and seemed to have met the governors and the CBN in the middle. Do you think it will have an implication on the case to be decided on the 22nd of February? Uh, the truth is that um, with, uh, with all due respect to Mr. President, I, I have a personal reservation on that um, statement that was issued today by the president. Uh, if you look at it, the president had directed that the 200 naira note should be acceptable as um, legal tender until um, next month, right? And the Supreme Court had given you an order for both the 200, 500, and 1,000 naira note to be legal tender. So if you look at it, it's a conflicting, right? It's, 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 that particular statement is conflicting with that of the order of court, and I, I, it doesn't um, it doesn't look well for our um, nascent democracy and rule of law. I one would have expected that the statement of the Mr. President uh, should comply with the order of court by directing um, everyone to um, maintain the status quo by using the 200 Naira, including that of 500 and 1,000, pending the, the determination of the substantive suit on Wednesday. And whether, whether, um, whether the Supreme Court is going to tilt to their argument on jurisdiction, or whether the Supreme Court is going to um, determine the matter based on agreeing with the state to allow the, um, the Naira to phase out in, in, in one year or, or more than that, as they had prayed on their motion paper. We don't know, but I, 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 I think there will be this uh, press statement that, that the president has given today is going to actually, um, it's like preempting the, the court 
and it's not good for our democracy and it's not good for our rule of law. Mm. It's, it's interesting, but, you, you know, the, when, when you will talk about the three arms of government, the, judici the executive, judiciary, and uh, the uh, legislature, we know they should function individually, independently, and all that. But there's also the issue of national security. Is national security big enough to make sure that all the arms of government do not function the way they should function? I don't know whether I'm putting it rightly, but can national reasons of national security give the executive, for instance, the power to overrule even what the uh, judiciary has done? Because one of the things, um, apart from the election that uh, he mentioned, uh, gave the impression that he wants to have a level playing field, another thing is security, where ransom payment and all the likes have reduced. And that was part of the reason that this policy came up. So because of national security, is it possible that the Supreme Court or the judiciary as a whole can be overruled no matter what they have said? Um, you see, um, this question is very tight because you are trying to actually box me into the corner. But what the law provides, even when you want to bring issues of national security, the law provides that the executive, the executive should first of all declare state of emergency, right, on national security. So you cannot um, be having an issue pending before the court. And then you want to squeeze in issue of national security inside. It's a two different thing. Uh, while we admit that there are uh, uh, independent um, guidelines that guide the tripartite institutions when you when it when you talk about um, the three arms of government i.e the executive the legislature and the judiciary you cannot also divorce the fact that there is a concept of separation of powers as propounded uh, uh, by baron de montesqui so when you talk about um the independence of these um arms of government you need to also look at the um, issues of um, separation of powers where each of them have to act as a chair to each other. But what we're talking about, the fact is that an issue has, you know, been lodged before the court. The court has not said, I, I think we need to clarify Nigerians here on this platform, that the court, the Supreme Court has not said, we have heard this matter. You ran for Supreme Court to come and hear you. Supreme Court said, we are not going to hear this matter. Wait right until we hear the matter the supreme court has not entertained this matter so it is it is like um trying to preempt the outcome of the proceedings of court so the supreme court is saying hold on stay status quo ante until we hear the matter on wednesday what is wrong with that just I'm comply I'm to the order of court and the come back court, on wednesday the supreme court let had the, the opportunity the Supreme Court has the opportunity to hear the court. They still postponed it. And what if the thing that r gave rise to this policy is an urgent thing that need to, needs to be curbed and cannot be said to everybody's hearing? There is uh, superior intelligence somewhere. And then the Supreme Court is just dragging its, its feet. So anyway, I'm not trying to stand in for the federal These government. These are also <laughs> issues that we cannot discuss here on this platform yeah. because um, they are so judicious. Mm. I'm very sorry, I cannot delve into the issue. Yeah, okay, I understand that. Um, but you have really thrown light to a lot of issues. The final word to Nigerians uh, regarding the election, regarding whatever you, you want to say, because a lot of people have said that uh, from the 25th of February, Nigerians are going to decide, and this election is also a determinant of the future of Nigeria. So everybody's excited about it. Your word to Nigerians as a lawyer and as a citizen of Nigeria. Uh, my final word to Nigerians is that uh, we should continue to maintain peace. We should uh, desist from um, uh, destroying any of the government properties or the financial institutions like banks, protesting to block rules and all of that. It will still come back to us to hunt us as citizens of this country. Go and get your PVC and go to the polls and decide based on your conscience and your convictions. You have seen what is happening in Nigeria. I don't think you would like to continue to face this problem in the next four to eight years that will be coming. Um, election is the only means through which you can enthrone 
government in a democracy. So you cannot in any other way bring in government except through election in a democracy. And um, with that being in mind, you need to get your PVC and go to the poll and exercise your rights. Take all those of your angers to the poll and vote in an election. Choose your best candidate and then let Nigeria continue in peace. I urge all of us to go to the polls and cast our vote properly. Thank you very much, uh, Utman Issa Tochuku, for coming on the program. It was really Thank enlightening. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll be talking with a, a legal practitioner, Utman Issa Tochuku, and uh, he was talking about the Naira redesign, but we were uh, zeroing in on the case of the federal government and the states that well, now there are about 10 states that uh, have gone to court to make sure that the federal government complies and stops the implementation of the uh, new Naira policy that the CBN brought. So we hope that we've learned something. We'll take a break now. When we return, other issues will come up. Stay with us. <laughs>